to discuss this subject, we have uh, Olufemi, Femi, he prefers being called Femi Daniel uh, from NITDA, which is the uh, Nigerian ICT regulator. So he has been involved in blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And we also have Elaine Heshak, based in London at Hogan Levels, who is the senior legal content manager. And she's going to introduce you to uh, the Hogan Levels homemade uh, um, blockchain tool. And uh, we have Lavin, who's a consultant at Hogan Levels and specialized as well in uh, uh, e-payments and um, crypto crypto assets and blockchain, etc. Um, so welcome, everyone. And um, we are going to start with the presentation of the blockchain tool. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Hélène. Thank you, Aïsatu. Uh, I am indeed part of the Engage Premium uh, team at Hogan Lovells. The team actually delivers innovative digital products, and the product I'm going to talk to you uh, about today is called the blockchain tool. So the blockchain tool has been uh, months and months in the making. It isn't quite finished, so what you're going to see now is a very exclusive preview specifically for uh, the Africa Forum today. And um, it's you know absolutely fantastic, I have to say, and it is enormous. So, you know, when we talk about blockchain uh, today, obviously, you know, there are banks, financial institutions, you know, uh, cryptocurrency exchanges, all sorts of um, um, companies that need to find out what's happening on blockchain and what's going on in the legal literary world in order to, you know, take positions, decide what they want to do, find out, you know, what uh, regulations are in place. You know, central bank digital, central banks are also looking into um, blockchain and some of its applications such as uh, central bank digital currency so there's a whole host of actors who are interested in blockchain and its applications such as you know crypto assets or cryptocurrencies digital token sales etc and keeping track of actually the all the legal and regulatory developments around blockchain and its applications is no easy task so you know what we have done here at Ogden Novels is created a tool specifically for this so this is what I'm going to show you now. So if I just share my screen very quickly. Okay, so there we go. So this is the Hogan Lovells blockchain tool. Um, what we've done is there are several entry levels to the tool. We have created a glossary of um, block, key blockchain terms, which I'm going to show you now. So that basically gives you lots of, people, lots of information about some of the main terms around blockchain, and it's a very easy way for somebody who is not that familiar with some of the lingo to find out what anything means. The tool uh, also uh, has this called a blockchain overview and token sales overview, which I'm showing you now. And this basically uh, answers any questions people may have on some very elementary issues around blockchain, such as what's blockchain, what's it's for, what, when will it happen, what it is. And we give a bit of an introduction again here as to what it is, what it does. So again, that's a kind of very entry level um, way of getting into the tool for anyone. But the tool itself um, also has, because it's, you know, has like a lot of information. We are basically tracking uh, legal and regulatory developments over 76 countries, 22 something uh, supranational entities. So this is things like ESMA, the World Bank, the European Commission, uh, the uh, Financial Action Task Force, and so on and so forth, as well as, you know, about 20 uh, states from the US. So by my count, we have about 1,100, you know, legal and, regulatory legal and regulatory developments in the tool, so that's enormous. And um, the way, you know, anyone who knows anything about blockchain knows that there are many, many, many kind of regulators and countries looking at um, various regulations or making statements or doing anything around it. So it's, you know, keeping track of what everyone's doing is, you know, quite a challenge. So what we created here is a very easy way for people to find out what's going on with this what's new section so that basically tells you everything that's kind of the main the main developments and the, the main legal la latest developments such as for example the two reports on stable coins and virtual assets uh, by fataf which came out you know earlier this month we've also created a very easy way of searching everything in the tool by keywords jurisdiction industry sector 
supranational organizations anyway. And the results are displayed in a very easy way to, to absorb, you know, the most relevant at the top, and then you can also search by uh, date. We have, you know, because, you know, blockchain has so many different uh, ways it can be applied. So we have partitioned the tool in three different sections, the applications, topics, and industry sectors. And I'm going to show you one of the pages to see, to show you how, how it actually works. So this is the, one of the applications of so crypto assets. We have created a very kind of introductory text about crypto assets, what it says, what it's like, what are the main legal issues are around this particular topic. And then created also a map in which, you know, that people can use to get straight into the content. This map of the crypto assets map and the token sales map are chopped up and have some, you know, colors signifying, you know, what the legal positions are and the legal restrictions are in various countries. But the main way to get into all of the content from the tool is from the, is for, sorry, is through the uh, main map on the homepage. So this shows you every single country we have content on. So again, as I said, it's 1,100 and something uh, legal developments altogether. So if you clicked on one of the countries like this, or if you went to view as a list, uh, you'd be able to go into any of the countries or any of the supranational organization. So how is the content actually presented? Well, let's go to the Nigeria page. So the Nigeria page you know, has everything we have on Nigeria. We, in this particular instance, we are following two regulators, the Security and Exchange Commission and the Central Bank of Nigeria. People can see at a glance you know, all the developments. I'll show you quickly another page. So that's the US page. And you know, each development has a few lines of explanation. And if people want to know more on certain developments, they can click a little plus sign and there's a bit more text that appears. So something like this, as you can see, this is 25 pages of content. So it's absolutely, you know, everything um, over the last few years that, you know, have has happened in the United States. Um, one of the really interesting features of the tool is also an ability to generate a report. So people may want to actually read this at their own leisure and they want to be able to select specific uh, countries or specific sectors or industries and therefore they can create very quickly a little PDF by set, you know, choosing you know, applications, topics and industry sectors like this and then also deciding what countries they want. So here for example it shows you every country we have uh, content on in the Middle East and Africa. So it is a very comprehensive tool and you know the way people can use it is a to keep track of legal and regulatory developments, you know, as in when they happened, because the tool is not a snapshot, so it's completely different to what a lot of other firms have done. You know, it's a very comprehensive, but it's also live. So everything that happens, you know, is added. So it's not just a case of oh, we've, we've launched it and then we don't know what's happening next. We do. And also what, what's very, very powerful with this uh, tool we've created is looking at how the evolution of the messages and the regulatory approaches from you know, all the various regulators, you know, looking at, say, you know, I don't know, Sweden, for example, see, seeing what they were saying uh, a few years ago and see how, how the, uh, the approach has, has evolved. And that obviously is, is very interesting for people who want to know not only what the position is today, but what may happen uh, a bit later on. So it's almost like a way of uh, measuring, you know, regulatory risk. So this, you know, um, I think I have used pretty much my 10 minutes. So uh, with no further ado, I will um, now leave you with Aisa Tu, Lavan and Olufemi. So thank you. Thank you, Ellen. So uh, now uh, Lavan will discuss with Olufemi on uh, the regulations, regulatory aspects of uh, blockchain and uh, crypto assets in Nigeria. Um, Nigeria is a very interesting country, so I'm sure they have a lot to discuss about, and maybe uh, we won't have enough time, but you might have some good news. Yeah, absolutely. And well, first of all, thank you very much for that uh, whistle-stop tour of the blockchain toolkit, Elena. I'm particularly interested in the uh, report generation aspect here. I think that's that's excellent. And uh, I mean, over a thousand pieces of um, information as well. It's a huge tool. So uh, looking forward to seeing that in uh, in full action soon. Um, 
As, uh, as Aishatu has already said, we're very lucky to have uh, uh, Olufemi here with us today. So if I understand correctly as well, you're here in both your capacity from the NIPDA side of um, things, as well as I believe you're doing some work alongside the central bank as well. Is that correct? Yes, yes, you're yes, you're correct. Um, Excellent. Okay, so we're, we we've got we, we've got a uh, strong authority here. Um, so in um, I guess where I'd like to start things off is uh, Africa is often regarded as a trailblazer when it comes to digital solutions to mobile payments and the adoption of technologies in general. Um, so when we talk about crypto assets and Nigeria. Um, it's not so surprising that it's 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 so popular there. In, in fact, Nigeria um, houses one third of the concentration of bitcoins globally. So I, I guess I'd like to kick off asking why why is uh, why is this the case? Why is it so popular in Nigeria? Thank you so much, Lavan. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good. So um, I think it's always good to have. Understanding Nigeria helps you to be able to place some of the things coming out of the country. Nigeria has the largest black diaspora um, in the world. Um, that means for every one, uh, five black people, Nigeria is one. And the, the diaspora community of Nigeria is well connected and highly educated. So some of the um, some of the things that happen in Nigeria is actually influenced by the diaspora, and also the fact that there is a lot of openness of the citizenry to innovation. You know, so that is uh, why there are so many main main mainstream news, not so good news. There's a lot of um, innovative people and um, a lot of things going on for the citizens. So what I what I can say as to that is number one, the Nigerians are highly connected with um, both the East and the West. I mean, in terms of the global divide, and they always they quickly catch on into you know, onto information. And of course, government always plays catch up on most of the issues, but the citizens are, are global citizens. So I think that would account for the reason why there's a lot of um, activities, particularly on the issues of um, virtual currencies and related technologies in Nigeria. Of course, was heavily by uh, MMM in 2018. So, uh, two million Nigerians were uh, had collectively lost 50 million US dollars in what turned out to be a Ponzi scheme. How has this affected sentiment towards crypto assets in Nigeria? It, it, it's a it's a very it's a very critical question in uh, Nigeria. Um, Actually, MMM came at a time where we were in a throes of um, recession. People were uh, were very, um, there was a lot of challenges economically and um, people were looking for a way out. So, and I guess that is the philosophy everywhere where there is recession, people take risk with a lot of things. But, um, and of course, I have friends and people who were victims of the MMM, and so it's a practical issue, and um, I, I can relate to some of the challenges that people had. We had um, Nigerians do, don't usually commit suicide, but um, some people, a couple of people actually committed suicide at that time. However, that has not um, changed the philosophy of Nigerians. Um, the local balances you win some you lose some and life goes on so um despite the fact that there was um the tragedy of the mmm which was actually it was anyone can see it coming it's 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 not something that was um i mean it was definitely going to happen because of the the, the ponzi scheme around it however that has not you know, slow down the pace of adoption and you know venturing into crypto assets. Um, Nigeria has, uh, like you have rightly said, the third largest um, concentration of crypto assets in, in in the world, and it's actually because people are looking at the next. What is the next move? So if we are not going to 
people do not want to just be bogged down by government or the issues that are passed. They want to look at the next move because they always feel that there is always a better tomorrow. So that's the philosophy in Nigeria. And I think that accounts for some of the issues we are saying. Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, if we change tax slightly, so we've we've got a we've got an interest uh, from the uh, the consumer demand side of things and how things have been affected there. But as we saw in the demo from Helen earlier, uh, there are there is a lot of jurisdictions that are putting out a lot of communication or um on the how the jurisdiction will treat crypto assets um and number of put out warnings and so some have even gone further and produces pieces of legislation that target certain types of crypto assets is this something that nigeria are looking at what's on the horizon in that sense in Helen's presentation pointed out, um, there is the um, developments are actually iterative. The regulators actually are iterative. No, no regulator have said only one single thing since the revolution of cryptocurrencies began. So um, the Securities and Exchange Commission in Nigeria 20, 2017 put out a note of warning. The CBN also put out something, a uh, note of warning. And then our Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, of course, um, put out a lot of um, cautionary notes, particularly because of the possibilities of the uh, anti-money laundering activities around some of the issues. However, there have been there have been progression and a quick one at that. I am in um, I'm in the national committee on on the um, looking at our virtual currency. How do we approach it? And what I can tell you, the report is actually out. Unfortunately, it is not on Helen's um, tool, but I'm sure when it's formally announced, it will definitely get there. It's um, it was actually concluded in 2000 June 2019. And some of the things we have come out with is number one that the virtual currency and use of use of blockchain is critical for national development and meet that the, the IT regulator had been you know mandated to actually produce a regulation that would be help, uh, that would help the particularly starting from the public sector how we can place some of chain and Currently, we have a use, use case with our customs um, customs board um, that are actually trying to put some of the activities on blockchain. And I'm also in a committee in, the, in MIDA that looks at some of the projects, all the IT projects of government, uh, we look at them and we have seen um, that of customs is actually in a matured state. There are some other ones that are coming up, which I cannot speak to right now because they've not announced formally. And um, so that is for blockchain. On the virtual currency, the, we agreed and we advised the policy direction is that there should be, we are going to be reg issuing, reg the central bank is going to be issuing reg um, for the exchanges. You know, So we do not have the capacity and the understanding, the sufficient understanding to be able to effectively deal with mining because we have um, gaps in terms of power generation and mining involves a lot of power generation technology capacity and all that. But starting from where we can with the exchanges, there are, there are, there are, there are large exchanges operating out of Nigeria and Nigerians are operating in a lot of um, crypto exchanges. So that has been looked at then the security the Securities and Exchange Commission was mandated to issue um, a guideline or regulation on the issue of uh, initial initial coin offering. And also the committee was also looking at um, a, a central bank uh, virtual currency. Um, we're looking at there is a Naira coin, but it's being looked at and there, there is no final you know, uh, decision on that yet, but these are issues that are coming up. So regulators are being told to what they are supposed to do, and I'm sure that um, in a very limited, short time, we we'll begin to see real, um, um, I mean, real productivity coming. I think so, may have cut out a bit there, but um, that that all sounds like there's some fantastic things on the horizon uh, uh, coming through from Nigeria. Um, I'm very, uh, very sad that we've only had 10 minutes to chat about this. It seems to be uh, something that we could have been talking about for, for quite some time. Um, but we've got to have 
draw this session to an end here. However, that being said, um, for those those that are listening and have been very interested about what Olafemi has had to say about um, developments in crypto asset and blockchain technology um, in Nigeria, prior to this call, we had uh, we'd actually said that we will um, look to put up a, a more in-depth uh, discussion over what Nigeria Nigeria is doing going forward. So we will we will continue this conversation in a different platform where uh, where we'll go into depth in in some of the areas that you've looked at for example in customs public sector implementations the the, the work that the SEC is doing around exchanges some of the AML work that you've referred to as well and then perhaps that how that fits in with um the african union digital strategy so i think this has provided a fantastic uh, a moose bouche for that uh, for that podcast and uh Look forward to look forward to talking to you uh, going forward. Uh, I'll pass it over to Isar to if uh, there's anything you you want to conclude with. Well, I just want to thank you all for your input. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Femi. Thank you, Levin. And uh, feel free to ask us any questions. If you have any questions, you can find our profiles. You can use the chat. I'd be happy to answer. And also, uh, stay tuned find out about the podcast that Levin was just talking about.